Right, I'm gonna, so I've flattened it out. I've flattened it out even more. Yeah, let's really flatten her out. Let's try to really get something floaty and ugly. A little bit more high risk, but we'll see what happens. And she's a floater. Beautiful, tough to catch, hard to deal with. First thing is it's not the same as the spiral kick that we do out of hands. The ball doesn't slice off the side of the foot, but the work that we put on the ball means that the ball rotates that way, turns over on itself. The kickoff style, it's actually coming off the inside of our boot. So like a soccer free kick when they're trying to bend it around a wall. What a special day down here at Gosh's Paddock, one of my favorite fields in all of the world. Today we're having a look at the kickoff. We're gonna talk about some of the different details and the new style of kickoff that is starting to creep in in the NRL Rugby League and the spiral and the floating effect that we can get when kicking the ball off the tee for those kickoffs. Yeah, that's nice. Right over there in the corner. I'm gonna start off with the rugby union style kickoff, so kicking the ball out of hand with the drop kick. If you wanna see the full How To Rugby Bricks video, the link is up in the corner now that explains drop kick all the way through from A to Z, hand placement, different styles, height, hang time versus distance. So check out that link, it'll show you the full how to drop kick. So obviously rugby union style, so I want a distance outcome on all three of these kicks. I'm looking to put the ball down there so that our chase line can get up and trap them down in their territory. With the drop kick for distance, we really want to break this halfway line, so win the half metre, win momentum, get our momentum going through to target. Plus also probably get on the ball nice and early, so not letting it get too high in the ball bounce. Get on this ball nice and early, so corner flag, that light pole in the distance is my target. Let's really push the ball through to through there. Get my momentum breaking halfway. <laughs> Slap it down there. So not my best strikes you'll ever see of a drop kick, but the ball got down there. It was the outcome that I was after because of my momentum. The next one is a orthodox, I suppose, kickoff in rugby league. So we still set the ball up the same as if we were taking a conversion. My target is that light pole, so the corner flag of a rugby field. So I just want to kick it just the same as I would a goal kick. So my setup can be the same, momentum follow through, really get the ball down there again so that we can get into their territory. Much better strike, distance over near that sideline. Now this is where the fun starts. As you can see, my ball setup is slightly different. The outcome of this kick is either to get a spiral on it or just to make it messy, floating, so that it's really hard to catch. So if we can get a good strike, plus get distance, plus get hang time, plus make it really hard to catch because it's floating or spiraling around, our defensive pressure can be so much greater. So that's why this kick is becoming more common trend and you're seeing a lot more in the game. My setup's different and we're gonna go into the details now. So what's some of the details that's really important to understand when we're trying to execute this floater or spiral style kickoff? First thing is it's not the same as the spiral kick that we do out of hand. So if we think about it, right foot kicker, spiral kick, we want to turn this ball. The ball doesn't slice off the side of the foot, but the work that we put on the ball means that the ball rotates that way, turns over on itself. We've seen some really good examples of spiral bombs. That's the style of kick that we're getting when we're spiraling out of hand. When we're kicking the kickoff style, it's actually coming off the inside of our boot. So like a soccer free kick when they're trying to bend it around a wall and try to hit the top right corner of a goal, that's the style of strike we're trying to get off this ball off the kicking tee. So we want to hit the inside of the ball, get this ball spinning that way with elevation which causes that float or also the spiral kick that's really hard to catch. So if the camera is my target, if I was kicking this orthodox or just like I do with my goal kick, so I've got my seams lined up at you guys, kicking up the back of the ball, good contact, kicking the ball downfield. With this other style, I want to turn the kicking tee around so that now the low part is facing you guys. My target is the corner flag or the camera lens here. I still want to set my seams up so that they're facing you. So that's a good place to start. This is going to be very unique. You see a lot of players lie the ball down, really flatten it out, create their own little angles that creates it. The place to start, in my recommendation, would be to line the scenes up directly at your target, lean the ball back towards yourself so that you can create that spin, and just find what works for you. The main thing is, we still want to kick the ball down there. We want height, 
we want distance and we want something that's hard to catch. Those first two are the most important, height and distance. That is the best outcome that we can get if nothing happens to the ball. We don't want to scuff the ball and put the ball along the ground, come up short, the ball only goes 20 metres of territory. We still want to get that territory for our team. The last point that I want to cover is just the momentum part. So I spoke about with the drop kick, I want to break halfway, I want to win that half metre, get my momentum going through to target. Make sure that when we are trying to create this and work the ball, we're not stopping. We're not just stopping and admiring. We still need to get our momentum breaking halfway going to target. That's how we're going to get height, that's how we're going to get distance, and if we get lucky we're going to get that beautiful float or spiral effect on the ball. Got an ugly strike that's hard to catch. Just went around the ball a little bit too much. So I really want to think about getting my foot really up the back of the ball near that belly. If I still don't get the spiral I still get a really good punch that floats the ball and wobbles the ball, so really smacking it, getting my foot through to target. And then I just hit that under the bottom of the ball, caused the backspin, but hey, we got distance and we got hang time. All right, let's really try to whip this one, really get her spiraling. Come on, spiral kick. So for me, like, yes, the spiral's great. Like, yes, the spin and getting something ugly is great. But if we get a nice strike that's down there, again, with all that distance, you've got to be happy with that. Like, you're still doing your job there as a kicker for your team. Yeah, that's nice. Right over there in the corner. All right, I'm going to... So I flatten that out. I'll flatten it out even more. Yeah, let's really flatten her out. Let's try to really get something floaty and ugly. A little bit more high risk, but we'll see what happens. And she's a floater. Beautiful, tough to catch, hard to deal with. So those are the techniques and the cues for you to think about when trying to bring this kick into your game. Now I'm only two weeks into learning this kick. I have never done it before, never tried it out. So I'm still learning and figuring out what's gonna suit me best. I think kicking is like a set of golf clubs, kicking out of hand, grubber kicks, drop kicks, spiral kicks, uh, kicking off the tee for kickoffs or conversions all different clubs where you need to organise your technique and get yourself organised with what's important, how you can execute on those kicks. If I was taking the kicks or getting a kicker in my team to take the kickoffs, I'd want distance and I'd want hang time first. So make sure with all your strikes, when you're trying this style with the spiral or the floater out, make sure you're still getting those two things and you'll still get selected, the coach will be happy and then we'll start to see those really good things happen. Lastly, the RB Vortex High Cut is probably the most popular tee for the kickoffs at the moment, it's being used in the NRL by a couple of the kickers. Um, it'll allow you to set the ball up exactly how you want it, personalise it, work out all those things I was trying to work out just then. So this one and the mid cut are available now from the Rugby Bricks website. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again on the YouTube Rugby Bricks page.